I've been asked this question fairly frequently in the last year or two since I've been working on this series of artworks centered around uh, the cafe, our cafe culture, sharing a cup of tea, sharing a cup of coffee. And I've thought about this quite a bit. I, I really believe that the, the prospect of a hot cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate is really one of life's greatest comforts and one of life's greatest delights. It's a treat that uh, can be savored at home or at a local coffee shop or at a bistro, even halfway around the world. A solo cup of coffee invites some reflection and some contemplation. And when we get together to share a cuppa with other people, it really offers a lot of hospitality and, and community. And no matter what the setting or the beverage, the, the idea of stopping for a cuppa lets us step away from our busyness. And in that pause, those moments of pause, we're gifted with the opportunity to just sink into the moment and to appreciate life while we enjoy our own company or the company of others. And so I'm hoping that these works of art actually capture some of those moments and those memories that accompany them. I've also been thinking a little bit more deeply about this concept in recent days and where does this idea come from in my own life? And there's a whole series of experiences that came to the fore that I thought might shed a little light on this and also perhaps prompt some other recollections and uh, memories on your part too. I grew up on a farm in rural Saskatchewan in the 1950s and the 1960s and it was a major event during that time when friends or neighbors would arrive in the yard and I remember shortly after anyone rolled into the yard either mom or dad would have greeted them and they would say come on in and we'll put the coffee on. And they would come in and they would put the coffee on and they would sit around the table and visit and share the news and the gossip. And I, I loved how animated my parents became in conversation with other than us children. And I loved being a fly on the wall, picking up some of the gossip and news that I would not normally be privy to. days of my youth on the farm, everything stopped for coffee at around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. We would pack up coffee, we would pack it up in those mason jars with sealer lids, we would pack it up with sandwiches and with cake, and we would take it out to the field where the men were working that day. Either they were haying or seeding or combining or spraying or summer following, whatever it was, they needed a break, they needed some nourishment between lunchtime and between supper time. And so we would take things out to the field, the men would get off the equipment, they would sit on the back of the truck, or we'd all sit in the shade uh, of the truck and have a little bit of conversation about how things were going out there, how things were going back at the farmhouse, exchange information about when they thought they'd be done, what time they'd be in for supper. And I really felt like I was part of the action. It became even more exciting as I moved into my teens and I got to drive the truck myself on the prairie trails out to the fields. That was uh, super exciting, but everything stopped. Three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon for coffee on the farm. There were several different kinds of congregations and churches in the rural community that I grew up in, the Anglicans, United, Lutheran, and Catholic, and all of these congregations had women's auxiliaries that were associated with them. And most of these women's auxiliaries hosted special teas and bazaars at the events of Christmas and Easter that were the important highlights of the church calendar. I remember lots of excitement in our house. My mother was a member of the Anglican Church Women's Group and special cakes were made and things were created for the bazaar and all of the teacups were packed out of the china cabinet and taken to the community center and tea was served. I remember being a little bit uh, more excited even as I grew older and was enlisted uh, along with my cousins and my sisters as servers at the tea. So that was fun being part of the action. But I also remember my mother saying, we need to go to the Catholic women's tea. We need to go to the United Church women's tea. They come and support our event and we need to go and support their event. And so the experience was one of building across congregations across the community. And so it meant more than just the tea, and just the coffee that was served. When I graduated from high school and left home, I moved to Saskatoon to go to the University of Saskatchewan, and I was eager to meet new people and make new friends. And one of the ways that that happened was over coffee. 
you'd run into someone who looked interesting and you'd say, well, why don't we get together for coffee over at the cafeteria? Marquis Hall was the main cafeteria on campus. Or why don't we get together for coffee at the buffeteria, which was uh, a satellite coffee place around campus. And inevitably that would happen, even as we were working on projects with fellow students, we'd get together over coffee in those locations. I was introduced to my future husband, David, over coffee in Marquis Hall on campus. And that's the location where we actually nurtured the early days of our relationship. I remember sitting with my cuppa, looking out the window at Marquis Hall and watching Dave approach across the, the campus bowl and feeling my heart lift and knowing that there was something there. It was uh, a, a lovely kind of experience and we still, to this day, after 47 years of being together, once in a while we'll turn to each other and say, well, why don't we go out for coffee? And when you head out for coffee, the conversation is a little bit different than it is when you're sitting around your own coffee table and your own kitchen table day to day at home. We have two girls and our girls are grown and have families of their own. And when I get together to visit with them, I always like to invite them someplace for a coffee, just the two of us. And I find that it's a chance to have those heart to heart conversations that you don't necessarily have when you're in the middle of the family crowd. Making time for coffee has been really an important piece in various relationship aspects in my world. My first career was with the Extension Division at the University of Saskatchewan in the 1970s. And what was common in workplaces during that period of time is that people actually took coffee breaks. Partway through the morning and then again around three o'clock in the afternoon, people would step away from their desks, they'd step away from the phones, they'd step away from their work, and they would actually meet together and sit down together in the coffee room for coffee or tea and for conversation. It was a great opportunity to learn informally what else was going on around the organization. It was an opportunity to find out more about your co-workers, maybe particularly those that you didn't work that closely with. You got a sense of their family life outside of work. You got a sense of their interests beyond the workplace. You got a sense of some of the projects they were working on in that organization. It really helped to build relationships across people in the organization and that made working together so much easier. days of my life as a nine or a ten year old I started keeping a diary one of those page-a-day diaries in which you could record the events of the day or one of those diaries that was a five-year diary that had the special lock and key on it that uh, you always lost the lock and could never get into the diary again I remember the entries were pretty boring and mundane more than a few entries said nothing happened today I think my favorite entry ever was nothing happened today again so you know how exciting that life was. But as an adult, I actually circled back around and I picked up that habit of journaling for myself with my favorite journal and a pen and always, always accompanied by a cup of coffee. Whether it was first thing in the morning, sitting out on the back deck, me, my pen, my journal, and a cup of coffee, watching the fish swim around and jotting a few notes or watching the birds come for their morning bath and kind of getting my thoughts together for the day or whether it was a break during the course of the day, or I would intentionally leave and head off someplace else where I'd uh, go to a cafe or a bistro and pick up a cup of coffee and sit there and make a few notes reflecting on my life in my journal. It became a very important element of my world and always accompanied by a hot chocolate, a cup of tea, or a cup of coffee. I've come to believe in my life that it's important that we surround ourselves with beautiful things. And so you'll see in many of the cafe paintings that there are flowers or plants or interesting containers or interesting mugs and teacups. And I have some of my own favorites that sometimes occur repeatedly in the work that I do. I'm a big fan of small posies. Brought a couple of them today. So we've got this lily here. I love, I love lilies. I love Alstroemeria. Uh, so these are some of the favorites that I like to have on the table or around me when I'm having coffee. I have a teacup that I actually picked up in Vancouver when I was out there on vacation. I looked at that and I thought, oh, it'd be lovely to have a cup of coffee in this one or a cup of tea. And this one actually shows up in one of the paintings. 
I've got uh, another favorite mug. This is by a local potter, Paula Cooley. This was a part of a new series at the time in which she created this. It's got a partner, a friend, with a mug from Ken Wilkinson, which also shows up in one of the paintings. And also this mug, which shows up repeatedly in the cafe series, is my go-to special mug every day, these days. It's a mug that we picked up in Estonia, in Tallinn, Estonia, on our Baltic cruise. It's a hand-painted mug, and it has survived quite a few years now, and quite a few runs through the dishwasher, but I love this mug and its cheerfulness. It lifts my spirits every time I pour a cup of coffee in it. Hair for a cuppa is usually the kind of thing that you would hear me say to my husband Dave on one of our international travels. I'm always eager to paint and to sketch in the cities and the places that we visit. I always have my sketchbook with me and I always have my paints with me and at the, the drop of a hat I'd gladly sit and sketch something. Dave's usually very accommodating of that, especially if we can find a comfortable place to sit and uh, even better if there's a cup of coffee that's involved. And so we often end up finding a bistro or a cafe that has a great view for me and a spot for us to plunk ourselves down and for Dave to have a cup of coffee. I'll be very engaged catching the, the scene in front of me, almost oblivious to some of the other things around me. And so Dave kind of acts as the sitting tour guide as he tells me about things that are approaching from the left and people that are approaching from the right and things that I might otherwise miss. It's kind of a match made in heaven and something that we really enjoy doing together. We've even had waiters who've dropped over and checked out what it is that I'm working on. They've maybe even razzed me that I really should have gone across the street to uh, actually capture their cafe instead of having their coffee and capturing someone else's cafe. And all those kinds of interactions make for really great fun and, and interesting adventures on our travels. Well, that brings to an end this series of videos on the Care for a Cuppa series and the cafe series in general. I hope that in sharing some of these stories and experiences from my own life that it's prompted you to think about some of your own remembrances and reflections about getting together with people over a hot beverage or grabbing one and sitting on your own somewhere along the way and what that does for you. I thought I knew when I put together the description of the show exactly what it was that had prompted the show, but it wasn't really until I dove into some of these experiences in my own personal history that it became more clear to me where these ideas had come from, where this belief had come from of the importance of connecting with other people in these social kinds of ways and the importance and value of taking the time to connect with ourselves along the way as well. I hope by sharing some of these stories with you that it causes you to think more deeply uh, about the place of gathering and sharing a drink with other people and that it helps you understand the Care for a Cup of Show and the works in the cafe series. Mm -hmm.